Hi, my name is John. Um, somebody gave me this problem. I'm not going to name any names, but anyways, this is a pretty difficult problem. I have a regular pentagon. Uh, I drew a regular pentagon as close as I can get it. And the way I did that was I used this as, I believe, uh, 70 millimeters. And so I, I figured out what this angle was right over here. Uh, each, since it's regular, uh, regular means that uh, all the angles and all the sides are um, equal. I take n minus 2 times 180. We know that from geometry. n is 5. Number of sides is equal to 5. 5 minus 2 times 180. That becomes 540 degrees total. So these angles have to add up to 540, all of these corners. Um, and then you divide it by 5 and it turns out to be uh, 108 degrees. Okay, so. I used uh, this angle right here as 180 degrees. And what the question imposed was, what is the ratio of this uh, area of the pentagon on the outside to the area of the inside, or the area of the inside to the area of the outside? And um, it was a, pretty, a little bit difficult question, and it took a little bit like uh, half a page or a full page, so I'm just going to, uh, it took me a while to figure it out, in fact. Uh, gentleman by the name of David DuBolt from uh, Ventura High School. He helped me to figure out part of it. Um, at the very beginning, I just didn't know how to even tack this problem. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the side A, B, the point, excuse me, A, B, C, D, and I'm going to label this side S right here. So every side on the outside is S. And I know something else too. If I can figure out what this side length S is, and I can figure out what this Aside uh, uh, this length this, uh, that's the ratio of the sides, and you square it, and because of the theorem that says if the sides are in proportion, because this this is a regular triangle, the inside is also a regular triangle by symmetry, that the triangles will be uh, in proportion, which means that if you square them, the areas will be in proportion too. So all I have to do is find this length. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label some certain parts. I'm going to label this point A. Uh, let me do that again. This point is A right there, and this point is B, that point is C, and this point is D. So that way, uh, I know which one's which. Also, I'm going to, uh, uh, instead of writing AB all the time, or AC or D, I'm just going to say the length of AD is equal to uh, little a, and um, I'm going to write it a little bigger. A D, the length of A D is equal to little a, and uh, the length of A B is equal to the length of C D is equal to I'm gonna label that as B and uh, the length of B C I'm gonna label, label that as uh, little C. So here it is. The whole thing is A, this is B, this is B, and this is little C right there. Okay. Not to confuse with big C right here. Um, we also know a certain thing. A is equal to 2B plus C. That length is A is equal to B plus B is 2B plus C. By symmetry, we know that this length is equal to that length right there. Uh, we have to figure out what A is. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, this is where DeVolt came in and helped me out here. He says you use a lot of cosines. I said, wow, really? There's a lot of cosines in there somewhere? So he said, yeah. Well, he didn't say yeah, but uh, he sent me a, a, what do you call it, a, a recorded message, per se. So I'm going to use this uh, outline right over here, and I'm going to just redraw it really nice and neat. Uh, do it upside down, but it doesn't matter. So this thing is 108 degrees. Right there, that's 108 degrees. This is S, this is S, and you have to figure out what this is. You have a S A S situation. Using an S A S situation, you have to use the law of cosines. So let's use the law of cosines. Uh, we have um, A squared is equal to S squared plus S squared minus 2 times S times S times cosine of 108 degrees. And then simplify that further. 
a squared is equal to s squared plus s squared is 2s squared minus 2s squared cosine of 180 degrees. Factoring out uh, s squared, you get, or 2s squared, 1 minus cosine of 180 degrees. And now, I'm going to do something a little bit tricky. Um, it had to be so unique, so, so, when I figure out the solution for this, it has to be so unique. Uh, it's like F equals MA or something like that. It's like really cool. So, you know, not as cool as F equals MA per se. Well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But anyway, so it's kind of interesting uh, how the answer came out really elegant. Uh, so we will derive the elegance of this formula that we're going to come, come, come up with. Cosine of 108 degrees. is equal to cosine of 2 times uh, 54 degrees, right? 2 times 54 is 108 degrees. Uh, that's the double angle formula for the cosine, and since I have a 1 right there, I'm going to use the double angle for the cosine, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared of 54 degrees. That's the same thing as that right there, and we'll replace it with this. As I replace it, the 1 and the 1 is going to cancel, the minus and the minus is going to cancel. You're going to end up with a squared equal to 2s squared times 2 sine squared of 54 degrees. And if I, as I take the square root of the left side and the right side, the square root of 4 is going to be 2, the square root of s squared is s, the square root of sine squared of 54 degrees is the sine of 54 degrees. That's it. Um, let me see what I have so far. Oh yes, uh, that's the value of A. You have that piece right there. How do you find the value of B now? Uh, B was a little bit more tricky. So let's go back to this diagram again. Um, and I have to do, I mean, this one's going to be a little bit longer to actually figure out. Um, I drew it this way, such that it makes a 190 uh, degree angle right there. And that's the length, that's s over 2, and this length is b. And I had to figure out what this angle was. That was really difficult. How do I figure that out? I go, and you stare, stare at it long enough, and you go, oh man, you get an epiphany. Hopefully. Knock on wood there. <laughs> and I looked at the inside, uh, I thought, wow, this is a regular uh, pentagon. Real surprise there. Uh, but this is also 180 degrees. Which means that this is 108 degrees. Wow, and I know it cuts it in half, so this must be 54 degrees. So according to this right triangle, Sokotoa, the sine of the angle is the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So let's do that again. Sine of 54 degrees is equal to uh, S over 2 divided by B. Solving for B, I get B is equal to um, S over 2 sine of 54 degrees. Okay. I did the work ahead and it's not that difficult to manipulate solving for B right there. Um, anyway, so, so by the way, this is the work. I did this like 5 minutes, 10 minutes ago. Okay, okay. Um, so 2B. This is equal to multiply this by 2, multiply by 2, the 2's cancel with the numerator and denominator, you get s over sine of 54 degrees. And then I'm going to manipulate this just a little bit. Um, let's, let's get a new piece of paper. It's kind of an interesting one. Okay, so I have, um, let's rewrite the information again. A which is, um, I hope you all can see that, A is equal to, um, let me get this, um, A is equal to, let me see what's A equal to, 2 sine of two, uh, 54 times S, okay? And we also know some things, um, we know that A is equal to 2B plus C because that length is A is equal to B plus B plus C. So we know that 
a is equal to 2b plus c. We're trying to figure out what c, the length of this uh, side is right here. Okay. For the regular, smaller uh, uh, pentagon. So solving for c is to get c is equal to a minus 2b. We know that c is equal to what was a? Uh, it's previously done somewhere. 2s. Oh, there it is right there. 2s times the sine of 54 minus, and then s over sine of 54. And I'm going to put this into, oh, listen, I hope you all got that. Uh, so a is equal to 2b plus c. So I'm for c right there. Uh, c is equal to a minus 2b. I moved the 2b to the right, left side of the equation. I replaced a with what was here. I replaced 2b with what was here. Not replacing with not to be, it's to be, not to be. Okay. I hope you all got that pun. Anyways, so I put over 1, and then I have common denominator. I multiply the top and bottom by sine of 54, sine of 54. And I manipulate this just a little bit. Is 2s sine squared of 54 minus s all over sine of 54. And I'm going to factor out the s in the numerator. You get 2 sine squared of 54 minus 1 over sine of 54. And this looks kind of like a double angle for the cosine. Um, when I first did this, I go, I thought it was double angle the sine, and I, I was like delirious or something. So, anyways, uh, it actually turns out to be the double angle for the cosine, obviously. So it becomes uh, s negative times 1 minus 2 sine squared of uh, 54 all over sine uh, 54. That The top portion right there is the cosine of 108 degrees. It's a double angle. So C is equal to minus S cosine of 108 degrees over sine of 54. So I want the ratio of a to C. Let's go back to the original problem here. The ratio of, uh, I'm sorry, not A to C. I want the ratio of this side to this side right there. So S to uh, C, or C to S. So C to S becomes C was negative S cosine of 108 over sine of 54 divided by s, one of these s's cancel. So the ratio of the short side of the regular pentagon to the long side of, long side of the regular pentagon is going to be negative cosine of 108 over sine of 54. So I want the ratio of the uh, areas, area uh, small to area large is equal to, square that, the negative cancels, it goes away, cosine squared of 108 over sine squared of 54. There it is. What a really nice, elegant formula right there. It's cosine squared of 108 over the sine squared of 108. I actually did some preliminary work on this, and um, I used my calculator, uh, cosine squared of 108 over sine squared of uh, 54. That turns out to be approximately 0.1459. Or if I did the x inverse of that, so it was approximately 6.85 times bigger. This length turned out to be, this area turned out to be 6.58 times this area right there. Okay? Uh, hope that answers your question. Thanks and take care.